Hello, readers. It's Mr. Sova here. It's the we we're in May. Happy May to you. Oh my gosh, summer is right around the corner. And uh, I have a new read aloud for you today. This is written, this book is uh, written. Well, let me start with what the title is. The title is Claude, the true story of a white alligator. And it was written by Emma Bland Smith and illustrated by Jennifer M. Potter. Now, if you don't know who Claude is, let me take you to a place called the California Academy of Science. <gasps> I've been there, I've been there. All right, all right, all right, settle down, settle down. Yeah, I, I hope you've been there. And if you haven't, that's okay, because you can go there if you haven't been there. It's in Golden Gate Park and it's a beautiful and amazing museum of science. They have an aquarium, they have a, they have a, um, a reef, a Philippine reef there. They have a full-size T-Rex skeleton and they have an albino alligator named Claude. There's Claude. Maybe you've seen Claude. I've seen Claude. I've seen Claude. Okay, settle down, settle down. So uh, you can see Claude from above. Here he is sitting on his special heated rock. You can also see Claude from below. You, there's this huge window and you can look into his habitat, both above the water and below the water. And there are some people enjoying Claude in his habitat. So this book is the story of how Claude came to the California Academy of Science. And the reason why I'm reading it, well, there's two reasons. First of all, it's a great story. And second of all, Emma Bland Smith is having a live webinar this week. So ask your teacher to take you to meet Emma Bland Sit Smith through the miracle of the interwebs, okay? And don't take no for an answer. Or you might have to actually be nice about it. So here we go. Now, this is, book is not available on Hoopla or any of the other ebook sites, but I found a read aloud on YouTube. So I'm going to turn the sound off of YouTube, play the video, and read the book. And so when you see the hands turning the pages, those aren't my hands, those are someone else's hands. I don't know who, a mystery page turner perhaps. So anyhow, without further ado, here we have Claude, the true story of a white alligator written by Emma Bland Smith and illustrated by Jennifer M. Potter. <gasps> the, the mystery hands I was telling you about. Oh, there's Claude right in there. He looks both happy and sinister. Here we go. In a Louisiana swamp, a baby alligator cracked out of his shell. Like his many sisters and brothers, he was about the size of a banana, not that big. Like them, he had a long tail and scaly skin. Like them, he was quite cute. But unlike his siblings, this little alligator was not green. He was white. This was an albino alligator. Oh, I better hurry up for the magic hands. He was different than other alligators, very different. And in the swamp, different can be dangerous. He didn't blend in with his surroundings, so he couldn't hide from hungry herons or raccoons. His pink eyes didn't see well, so when he got older, it would be hard for him to find food. And his pale skin could get badly burned in the hot southern sun. Worst of all, his differentness made the other alligators uneasy. The baby alligator was in danger. The man who ran the alligator farm was worried. This little guy needs protection, he thought. So he gave him to a special zoo in Florida that raised and cared for alligators and other animals. The zookeepers named him Claude. To protect him, they put him in a pen by himself. He was safe now, but all alone. Claude lived alone for almost 13 years. 
until one day biologists at a museum in far away California heard about him. They were excited. A white alligator? How different, how wonderful. They wanted Claude to come to their museum and they had the perfect place for him to live. The biologists asked, for, asked the zoo for a second alligator. Claude had been alone all his life. They hoped that in this new home, things could be different. Maybe the other alligator, Bonnie, would accept Claude. Maybe they'd even become friends. So Claude, who by then was eight feet long, that's two feet taller than I am, took an almost 2,800 mile four day road trip. A professional wild animal handler drove both alligators all the way across the United States to the California Academy of Sciences in San Francisco. Hey, we live there. When they arrived, a crowd of museum staffers were waiting to welcome them. When the handler let Claude out of his crate, Smiles and cheers spread through the audience, hooray. A special team of biologists gave both alligators a physical exam to make sure they were okay after their long trip. They were in great shape. Then the biologists moved the alligators back into their crates and lowered them into the museum's swamp habitat. The crowd watched anxiously. Would Claude like his new home? Would he and Bonnie get along? Claude explored his new swamp. It was warm. It had plants and trees and a fancy heated island. Over the next few months, Bonnie and Claude shared their swamp. They swam together. They ate together. They even shared the heated island. But Bonnie didn't like Claude. She didn't like how he bumped into things because of his bad eyesight. She didn't like how he bumped into her Oh, come on, Bonnie, be a little more patient. So one day she bit him on the foot, hard. Poor Claude. The biologists hoisted him out of the swamp. Then they operated on him to remove his pinky toe. <gasps> Claude took two weeks to recover from the surgery. Poor Claude. When he returned to the swamp, Bonnie was gone. The biologists had sent her back to Florida. Once again, Claude was all alone. Or was he? In all the stress of sharing the swamp with Bonnie, Claude had hardly noticed his other swamp mates. Five enormous snapping turtles. Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael. Wait a minute. Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael. And they're all turtles. I wonder if they're teenagers. I wonder if they're ninjas. I wonder if they live in the sewers of New York City and eat pizza. No, no, no. They live in the Academy of Science. Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, Morla, and Jaws were rescue animals too. They had been saved from the illegal turtle trade 40 years before Claude arrived in San Francisco. Would they attack Claude? Would he attack them? What happened next was a surprise. Huh? They became friends. After all, they enjoyed the same things, like good food, a new toy, and bath time. Turtle being cleaned by fish and Claude getting his monthly shower and massage. I want a monthly massage. Sometimes they squabbled as friends do. Once Leonardo decided to check out Claude's fancy heated island. Claude was annoyed and he sat on Leonardo. Oh. But eventually they worked it out. The turtles didn't mind that Claude was different from other alligators. They were turtles for goodness sake. For the first time in his life, Claude had buddies. It's good to have buddies. Claude made other friends as well. People from all around the world came to San Francisco to meet him. A white alligator? How different, how wonderful, they thought. His fans drew pictures of him and wrote him letters. They bought stuffed white alligators at the museum shop to take home and cuddle. And on his hatch day, they threw him a huge party. Claude was a celebrity. No paparazzi, please. He was also an, an ambassador for science, 
Visitors learned how habitat destruction is hurting wildlife. They learned about camouflage and animal behavior and the genetic code that makes each creature unique, including Claude. They learned that there are hardly any albino alligators in the whole world, probably fewer than 30. So, oh my goodness, Claude is one of only about 30 white albino alligators in the whole world. And readers, we've got him here in San Francisco. How lucky are we? Claude was no longer alone. Now he had friends by the thousands. The lonely outcast alligator had become the most loved alligator in the world. Claude was still different, very different, but in this swamp, different was wonderful. Ooh, let's take a look. Here we have some questions about Claude. Um, before I take a look at those questions, I do. I love the last line in the book, different was wonderful. And isn't that the truth, readers? Different is wonderful. What if we were all the same? What if we were all the same, like all the alligators and we, I'm pretending to be a robot. It'd be kind of boring, right? So Claude is super special because he's so different. So what I'm going to do on these two pages, I'm just going to, I'm going to read the questions to you and you can stop the video, this video, and then you can read the answers to the questions. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and move this over. The first question is, where is Claude from? I'll just tell you. He was hatched on an alligator farm in Louisiana. Then you can read the rest on your own. Here's the second question. What is the difference between alligators and crocodiles? Hmm, that's a good question. Here's the third question. Why is Claude white? Here's the next question. How many albino alligators are there? Oh, oh. Oh, you know? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, we learned it in the book. That's right, fewer than 30 in the whole world. Thanks for raising your hand, by the way. I appreciate that. Here's the next question. Why can't albino alligators live in the wild? Hmm, <gasps> we learned a little, yeah, okay, uh-huh. Oh, that's right, he could get burned by the sun, okay. Um, He's not camouflaged anymore. Yeah, so predators could get to him when he was a baby. Okay, all right. <laughs> Hold on readers, someone needs to be let into the school. I'll be right back. Actually, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna end the book now because someone needs to be let into the school and I'm in the library. So go back, pause that, and I will see you next time after you look at the questions. I'm all kerfuffled, but I gotta let someone in the library. Bye everybody!